Morning all, Wednesday morning, hope you're well. It's going to be a busy day for me today, I have a wedding to do. On a beautiful sweltering day already, it's uh, just before 11am and it's already really hot. Um, thankfully it's um, in an air-conditioned venue, but there is going to be some photography at the bride's house, so I hope that's going to be okay, because I get very hot and sweaty very quickly. So anyway, hopefully that'll be well, all right. Well, today, um, I'm going to have another crack at this anthology by Cornell and Deal. Um, I don't usually do uh, two videos about a tobacco one after another, after I've done an impressions video. Um, however, on the video that I did yesterday, somebody suggested that I try it in a Meerschaum. So I figured that's what I'd do. Um, I'm not going to make this a long video. Um, I'll just do a couple of clips and that's it. Um, and then give you my findings a little bit later on. But rather than sit and talk throughout the smoke, I'll just uh, summarize it. So this is the pipe. This is the uh, the Pipe Club of London. I've already put some out to dry. Um, you've seen the tobacco already. I'll give you a very quick shifty at it again. It's really good looking tobacco. A very sort of uh, chocolate brownie style look to it. It's, it's Although it's lightly pressed when you, it feels lightly pressed, but they've somehow, that's probably the Perique, although I believe there's not a huge amount of Perique in there, but Perique tends to darken it and it often get, gives you a bit of a shine. Um, but as, as I say, that's already there. And this is the Pipe Club of London Pipe of the Year uh, for 2018. A beautiful Meerschaum pipe. Um, lots of people got these uh, with lots of different varying designs on the pipe. Obviously the club logo um, debossed out of Meerschaum, which is stunning. I love that. Um, and there were varying designs in terms of the rest of the pipe. This is the one that I got. Didn't really have a choice, I don't think, at the time. Um, but um, I prefer... Uh, there's only certain types of the filigree ones that I like. Uh, I'm not a big fan of those flowery uh, filigree type uh, Meerschaums. Uh, in a way, I prefer traditional shapes like an apple or a billiard smooth in a meerschaum but um, i'm not a big meerschaum smoker so i don't really know if there's any difference in terms of you know the, how hot they get and that that kind of thing i do have another meerschaum i, I really didn't want to go on but um, i'll show it to you quickly the only other meerschaum i have at the moment is a, a custom made one by koc pipes um, and this the idea of this was to be like a, a sea rock kind of finish um, in, a, in a sort of a billiard apple kind of shape. Um, let's put these grooves on there, which I don't know why it's done that, but I would have preferred it without that, but it's, it's, it really doesn't matter. But this was the main reason this is LCS Briars had that carved. Um, and it's just more of a gimmicky kind of thing to have. I thought it was cool. Um, I really, really don't smoke it very often. I've probably smoked it a handful of times. But I have smoked this one um, fairly. Um, you can see it's started to colour up a little bit here and there. Um, I have smoked it quite a number of times. Um, the thing to remember with some of these Meerschaums is that you have to take the stem off anti-clockwise and put it back on anti-clockwise because otherwise you might unscrew the mortise. These connections are always a little bit iffy. A lot of times, not always, but a lot of times depending on the maker. So you put it back on the same way, and you can see here you've got PCOL 2018 and 925 silver band. Really thick, not the most comfortable stem. I suppose I could make myself a stem, I've never really tried, uh, I never really thought about doing it, but there's no reason why not. Because all you've got to do is drill the... Uh, stem to fit that mortise. It's got a very big chamber. I've only tamped it in very lightly. So it's kind of a somewhere between an air pocket method and just a regular two or three stage fill.
So like I said, I'm not going to sit here and smoke it um, and leave the, the, the video going. I will come back to you once I've had a decent portion of this bowl and talk about it. Okay, back again. So um, I've been smoking this for about half an hour now. <clears throat> and I would say that perhaps the flavors are a little bit more sort of defined, a little bit cleaner, being that it's a mirchon. But in terms of flavor, um, I think it just helps me focus and maybe describe the flavors a bit more, but it hasn't really improved it a great deal for me. Um, the overriding thing with this blend for me so far is that little bit of spicy heat that you get in the background, the back of your mouth, you know, in your throat. There's mild sweetness. but you get a rich sort of strength and power on the retrohale. And as you retrohale, you do get a little blast of sweetness at the back of your palate. But I don't get a flavor as such. You know, I don't get zestiness. I don't get typical Virginia grassy, hay flavors. There, it is there a bit, like there's, there's hints of it, but it's pretty much in the background. And it's that richness, that um, that that sort of. It's not quite a, a peppery note, but there's a warmth, there's a heat, together with a little hint of um, sugary sweetness. But it overpowers the sweetness. That heat, the richness, overpowers the heat, uh, the sweetness. A little bit of earthiness to it, and a bit of that dry. Like I said yesterday, a little bit of that burly-ish kind of flavor, a little bit of, uh, of a dry kind of experience. I wouldn't insult this blend by saying it's a bit cigarette-y, but it's a little bit linear in terms of the flavor because it's so, um, un although it's more defined in the mirror room, it's still a fairly, you know, you can't really make out discrete um, components, for me anyway. Maybe I'm not experienced enough, I don't know, but um, actually a good way to describe it, I think this is a milder Sansa Polk row. Um, and some people will know what I mean by that. And for a lot of people, that would be awesome, because certainly for American tastes, I think um, heat, warmth, spiciness, pepperiness, chili heat, I, I think that seems to be certainly a lot more enjoyed in the states the cigars are the same and it's just not my kind of preference so for me the components which are celebrated you know red virginias and things like that i really don't get any of the advantages of having those kind of tobaccos in there um it really isn't translating into the smoke for me um, that's just my take on it um, I haven't really changed my opinion of it since yesterday, other than to say that it has kind of, um, sort of, it's a little bit more, uh, I could maybe describe it a little bit better. Um, maybe the flavors are a little bit more, um, appreciable than they were yesterday. Yesterday they were far more muddled. Um, and today I can sort of identify them a little bit more, but there isn't actually a huge amount of flavor there. It's more of an experience, a sensation. A little bit of flavor, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of earthiness, a little bit of that dry cardboardy kind of burly kind of flavor, but really not uh, a tobacco which I'm enjoying at this stage. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, I, I, I can happily go through the bowl. You do get, you know, every so often you'll get a little bit of a burnt sugar sweetness flitting in and out, but it's just not there consistently enough to enjoy. Um, despite letting it dry, it has needed quite a few relights. Having said that, I think that it's very possible that with um, some age, some decent age, it could be a lot, lot better. It might be even fantastic. 
because um, as I said yesterday, it feels like it's there under the surface and it's just not unlocked at this stage. Um, and you're getting all that heat um, rather than that spiciness rather than the actual base flavors. Um, so there is a certain smoothness to it and it could well be that it's a little bit too smooth, a little bit too subdued at the moment. Um, despite having those that spicy kind of thing, which you could interpret as a rough edge, it's not actually, it's just spicy, um, but it's still smooth. Um, and I think that with time, it's possible. I don't know for a fact, but it's possible that the flavors will be unlocked and come more to the surface, more to the fore. Um, and maybe that heat will just subdue just enough to balance out the blend. So, you know, at the moment it's heat up there and flavors down there with time, you know, maybe they'll balance out and you'll get a much more harmonious experience. I'm hoping that's the case. Um, so I'm going to jar up the rest of this tin. Um, I've got some jars just about the right size and we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll send a couple of samples around here in the UK and um, we'll see how it improves over time. Thanks very much. Don't take my word as gospel. This is just my personal experience. I'm, I'm uh, really not um, attuned to American sort of peppery, spicy, hot kind of blends. So it's just me. Don't feel that um, this is going to be everybody's experience. You know, give it a try yourself, by all means. If you can get it, have a go. Why not? It's not a bad blend, that's for sure. And there's certainly a lot of potential um, in it, as far as my palate is concerned. For some people, for sure, it'll be a great blend now. I mean, the comments yesterday indicate that. So um, certainly give it a go. And that's just been my experience. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you on the next one.